So as I said, um, the lyrics for what in the beginning were completely different in one way. Um, it was my version. Of, like I said, I had no construction, no no ideas of constructing songs at the time. I just kind of went by what sounded good, and uh, I performed it um, live at a restaurant I was working at, and um, I kind of did like a little small show there, a couple of uh, original songs. And I, I debuted that song at the end. It was like my little encore song at that. And I got a lot of feedback for it. And I actually made one lady in the audience cry. She said, that, she said I couldn't stop crying. It just rang true. And I, I did something about that song that was just a lot more than the rest. Um, plus, I mean, I felt it. Every time I sang it, I felt it. I was introduced to a man named Nadie Hara, who uh, is actually a recorder and a musician out in Chantilly, um, through a friend of mine, and I took him that song, and uh, uh, we scratch tracked it, and it came up to like five and a half minutes, it was a long song, because I put so much in there, it was just really long, and the timing was all over the place, the, you know, the bridge was in my... 6 8, the, the chorus, and everything else is in 4 4, which is all over the place. Then we sat down, we kind of went through it, and then we, we cleaned it up. He basically helped me comb through it, shorn things up, and kind of like give me the idea of, you know, you know, writing songs and melodies, and, and you know, kind of keeping the same piece between verses and chorus and everything. And um, so we did that. Then we, we recorded the song, and he, he said there was something, something was different, something was, he, he wasn't completely happy with the recording, he wanted to add something to it, he just didn't know what it was. So we went, we moved on, we moved, we recorded the, my neck, my neck, the next song, which was Morphine, which was also originally called Addicted to You, and we combed through that together, and um, we uh, cleaned that one up as well. Um, so after the release of Morphine, we were going to go back and get proud of me to the way that we wanted it to be and everything. But I met a man at an open mic and his name was John Schreiner. And um, I don't know, I, I kind of went up to him after he, he was performing with his band, uh, Schreiner, and it was a three-piece band. I think it was at the Epicure Cafe. And I went up to him, introduced myself, and told him I worked at a restaurant and, you know, uh, kind of hosted an open mic night there at the time. And asked him if he wanted to show up. Lo well, and behold, that Monday he showed up and uh, saw me play and uh, came up to me afterwards and said that he really liked what he heard. He's like, you got something. And I was like, you must be drunk. And he was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not drunk at all. Because I've had plenty of people blow smoke at my ass about <laughs> uh, doing this at third and you sound great and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it never pans out. It's just, you know. It was just drunk talk from other people and stuff. So I usually never pay attention to it. But I gave him a call. He came over and uh, to my house. And we kind of combed through some of my other originals and stuff. And he actually even gave me a brilliant idea in that song too. was uh, changing one of the chords and stuff. So I'm throwing in an extra chord in there. So I went back with my uh, manager, Amy, we went back, we, we met with Nate, he showed us a um, recording of what he was kind of working with, the proud of me. And um, I, I liked what he did with Morphine, because it was it, it was just really retro, rocky. Um, you know, it's and it's a great song, I love it, but at the same time, it's, it wasn't my sound. I wanted to capture every bit of proud of me. The one song that means that much to me, I want to capture every bit of its essence in the right manner and how I think it should sound. 